Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on LaTeX programming. Now, in today's tutorial, uh, we'll te I'll tell you guys how to do all the work we, we used to do uh, in TechMaker from the terminal. Now, you may be asking, why should I use terminal and if I have a nice TechMaker software that kind of does all the uh, LaTeX jobs nicely? Well, to start with, um, to start with, what happens? What happens if that you don't have a TechMaker in certain systems installed? Well, and also, uh, TechMaker has some uh, is very much good for a lot of jobs. But for sometimes, if you want to run extra uh, command line arguments for compiling TechMaker, which for compiling the tech file you have, which kind of becomes necessary in some cases. Okay, it's always better uh, to know how to do this. How to do the same process without having a uh, an external in a dedicated editor available so what you're going to do here is that today i'll tell you guys how to compile a tech file okay do all the compilation on the web tech compilation everything from the terminal uh, instead of the conventional way we used to do with uh, tech tech maker okay this has a lot of advantages i mean this has a lot of advantages and disadvantages okay uh, let me put that first so that let me put that straight away so that uh, you get you this you can Wait, wait the judgment on your own the plus side is uh, the plus side is uh, you, you you can use any editor and the term from the command line and you have little more control over uh, options if you want to pass certain command line arguments uh, while compilation like compilation flags that is which kind of becomes necessary in certain tech uh, certain uh, compilation of certain tech files then uh, then this option of running this option of running uh, the files in where the terminal is become becomes very useful. And if you if you and the downside is uh, just since you didn't you're not using a dedicated editor, what happens is that your uh, your compilation stuff like so the auto completion stuff like uh, if you want to write if you want to write comma if you want to um, uh, auto complete if you want to use any auto complete options for commands or uh, you want the uh, editor to bring the symbol just by picking this by the click of a button or something of click of the mouse button or if you want if you want uh, a quick wizard like what like how to make tables how to make a, ta ta a table template generate or a table template or some, something like that then those kind of stuff uh, are not possible here in the sense here in the in um, TechMaker, the advantage is that it just gen uh, as and when you type, it just hints the options, and then you can just click auto complete and just write about it. But if you use a dedicated, if you use a non-dedicated editor, and if you want to use with this with the terminal, then that option is not possible. So sometimes what people do is that they just write the code in the TechMaker uh, and compile it using the terminal separately. Well, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Okay. Now what I've done is that I'm just opening gedit. I, I can I could have done this in Genie as well, but not a problem. It's not a big deal. You can use any editor as you want. I've taken gedit and I've at, I invoked the terminal option inside gedit over here, so that I so that I don't have a sep I don't have to work with a separate terminal. And I just kept the uh, the document, uh, PDF the PDF file over here. The output the output of this term tech file over here. Okay. Now. Uh, what I've done is that I've just uh, just written some sample contents. Don't worry if you like, if you guys don't understand. Don't worry. These are actually the contents which I've taken uh, in one of the previous tutorials where we were working on where we were, where we were working on uh, the tables. Okay, I just copy pasted that. The only additional thing is this part. Uh, uh, where is it? Yeah, this part. This is the only addition we do. We did. I did, and that, then, then again, it's not that complicated. I just wrote a new section, and then I write this con con statement: the papers written by site forget no, underscore nineteen ninety one, site Girash nineteen sixty eight study, and site Conrad nineteen seventy five thermal. Say some research works done on Mars. That's it. And then I also wrote that this paper, so this paper by site ref name is a joke. Okay, and I just added a bibliography input here and i wrote the bibliography style on the top if you guys were following me with the previous tutorials you'll understand this you'll understand this it's not that difficult and this is the bib file we were using we just created some time ago okay now 
Now what I've done is I just uh, I've compiled this file and I've given I've shown it over here. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to go to the folder over here. And if you see, uh, we don't need. Uh, let me just close this the PDF. Now uh, the only file that we need is this bib file and this tech file. Other than that, we don't need any of these. So let me delete this so that I can just start from scratch. Okay. Now what what can what now the thing is now these are done now let's see how to compile how to make the uh, latex first now to compile the document and to make the uh, pdf first you need this command pdf latex okay now the command just in your terminal just type pdf latex and then your file name and my file name is terminal.tex so i'll just type terminal okay and uh, just a caution I mean I'm not saying it's a caution just a reminder in some of the compilers okay it is necessary to give the extension TX mandatorily in some compilers if that extension dot TX is not necessary so what I'm suggesting you is that just to make sure uh, just understand uh, just try this out and see whether this is working fine or not and then you get you'll get to know what's going on okay in my system uh, this uh, extension is not necessary but uh, anyway extension is not necessary so i'm anyway writing that i'll just show you what the what the problem is i'll get let you know so to compile it just type pdf latex space your file name with the extension and just run and that's it when you compile this okay when you compile this uh, you see your arc your arcs file or auxiliary file your log file your and your pdf file gets generated and if you open this pdf file and there you have it your pdf is ready so let me keep this side by side there you have it uh, your contents are here it's compiled over here and your terminal file is over and your pdf file is over here but thing is the thing is if you look if you see we just compiled only once so as a reason as a result the table numbers are missing so if you were to zoom it up you see the table numbers are missing over here here all of them are in question marks okay so so what i'm going to do is that uh, to rectify this out we have to include uh, the pdf lat we have to compile this again so if i write pdf lat terminal again now the, now if you see the advantage of the pdf viewer in uh, ubuntu is that it, it kind of automatically refreshes so if there's any change to the source file which is which you're view viewing it just automatically refreshes that's a good thing that's a really good thing. Sometimes, if you're working with Windows, uh, in, if you're working with Windows, the uh, the, uh, the common PDF viewer like Adobe Reader that you use may not refresh. May not refresh. And even if they refresh, uh, what happens is that they just uh, card where will come and show you the la uh, last page. First, I mean the first page. The thing is. Uh, the thing is, we don't need that kind of an edit. We don't. We don't. Uh, I mean, sometimes it may not be that necessary. It be what we need is that we need a a PDF viewer, okay, which just refreshes instantly when the source file is modified. And second, it just shows you. It just go uh, directs you to the page where it kind of uh, where the uh, changes have been made at the last. Okay. Now the PDF viewer in Ubuntu is good. Okay, but in case if you guys are wondering what kind of PDF viewer I can use, uh, I can give you a suggestion. There is a PDF viewer called as Sumatra. You can use that, and it's absolutely light, lightweight, and you can use that as an alternate PDF viewer if you are in Windows. Um, I am not sure about what kind of PDF viewer they use in Mac that replicates the same thing. So if you guys you know just put it on the comments, so that will be useful for others. Others you are watching it, okay. And uh, right now you may not understand how interesting this is, but uh, you will see how this how this works now. So, okay. Now, uh, if you see, there are question marks over here because the papers are missing. We haven't we haven't compiled the bibtech compilation yet. To do the bibtech compilation, what you do is just type bib tech and then type terminal dot ox. Instead of uh, what do you do, just type terminal.ox. Okay, you don't have to type, type tex, -E just type t terminal.ox, and that will do. And what happens is that uh, let's see, nope, okay, 
I guess you have to type terminal.txt. Okay. Now this is the problem. You see, it, uh, the term, uh, it says that I couldn't open a file name called as terminal.txt.ox. The reason is because in my system, in my system, okay, uh, at in my system, what happens is that uh, this becomes a file name. The latter compiler takes the extension also as a part of the file name. File name. Okay. So that's why if I if I use terminal.tex, okay, it's it it actually takes it just it says that it couldn't open terminal.tex over here. So that's the problem. That's a kind of a problem. So what I used to do is so so to uh, as a fix of it it's not actually a fix what you do is that when you, when you compile the file just compile with pdf latex and uh, avoid the extension in some of your system you might have to put the extension some in some, some of your system you don't have to just check which category it comes in and then do accordingly so with that there you have it now there you have it now the uh, now there you have it your pdf latex turned turn out to be fine and when during the second compilation it turned out to be fine so that's about it this way you have an idea of how to come this way you are in a position to compile your file from the terminal okay now what i'll do i'll just i just close this up and i'll go back here and i'll delete all this i'll just give you give you guys a clean clean slate and clean slate explanation of what happened to compile the file uh, file just a pdf latex space file name with or without extension you check it on your system and then type enter and that's it you just compile everything and then if you look at it your file will generate uh, your tech file will generate an uh, aux file log file and your pdf this is for auxiliary information and then you have the file ready ready okay now the thing is sometimes uh, to make sure that the question marks everything they are all proper you just have to compile it twice and when you do this a compilation twice, your tables, table of contents, everything, all your figure numbers, reference numbers, everything, they'll come fine. And if you want, and for the papers, what you can do is that take the same file name, but instead of PDF LaTeX, just type BibTeX. For bib, type BibTeX and the file name and press enter. And press enter. And when you press enter, okay, what happens? What happens is that uh, the bib tag will generate two files, one called as terminal.bbl and one called as terminal.blg. There are a lot of tech, uh, these are some nitty gritty technical stuff, but uh, just to give you guys a uh, glimpse of what's happening here, let's open this in gedit. If this uh, terminal.bbl has the, all the bib items ready, all the bib items ready just going to copy all this and just put it in the uh, put it in your file and that's about that's about this part okay otherwise uh, let me zoom it up for you okay you see the references like uh, uh, the first reference that's the joke thing we made and if you want to look at the references we made some time ago all those are written in a separate uh, separate item over here separate bib items over here they'll be just copy pasted over there in a particular format okay and that's what how bbl looks uh, dot bbl looks like and then if you look at the terminal dot blg okay it will have it will have the all the lot of internal commands and internal comments and counting counting uh, count count or list of some list okay this will be this kind of uh, gets used for you know running the biptech file and all so don't let's not worry about it these are some uh kind of hardcore tech hardcore tech related stuff so let's not worry about it okay uh, the thing is uh, control the super ah yeah fine okay now the thing is the this is what is necessary with this done and if you look at the pdf look at the pdf it's fine Okay, once the biptech is ready, you, what you have to do is just type PDF LaTeX twice. And we're doing the first time the references pop up, and in the second time, the the the, call, the calls will be made. Like wherever you refer, cited it, the, those parts will be filled. So the thing you have to do is that first type PDF LaTeX first, and then biptech for biptech once, and then type PDF LaTeX twice. And when you do this twice, all your uh, uh, tables, references, everything will be taken care of. So, 
just to give you guys just one more try deleting all this just one more try okay in four steps pdf latex once and then it will generate all the files and then keep let's keep it as it is and then what you do is that type uh, biptec once biptec once and then pdf latex once more okay once more and you put the pdf latex once more and there you have it that's there you have it this way you know exactly how to work with the, with the terminal and pass it and if you want to do some more jobs or like if you want to pass few more uh, command line arguments and stuff what you have to do is that just type pdf latex uh, you pass your compiler flag here something like compile I me mean, i'm just making it making it up over here like that compiler flag there are any compiler flags okay and then if i put the file name put the file name and that way you are able to pass it and uh, in one of the coming tutorials i'll explain you guys how to uh, how to pass uh, how to pass uh, a compiler flag while compiling the tech file okay thank you guys for watching hope you guys found it interesting and fun funny okay uh, i'll see you guys next time so see you then